Hello gamers, I just finished doing my Elden Ring Every Death is Exercise stream, but there's a little something different today, I did the DLC. It just dropped nearly 5 hours ago now, and I thought I'd let you guys know all of my impressions of the first 2 hours of the game or so I played. And if you are wondering whether or not this DLC is actually worth it, I will talk about that later. I'm gonna spoil up to the first 2 Remembrance bosses, I do not know how many Remembrance bosses there are, but basically if you want to know what a Remembrance boss is, just think of it as like a story boss, like a main one you have to fight. For the most part, you have to fight. There's some optional remembrance bosses, but anyways, yes. The DLC opens up with a nice Breath of the Wild shot, which 100% you can tell when these are coming now. You see the vast expanse. There's this big fire guy in the background for some reason. It reminds me of the high-level enemies in Xenoblade games that are in the baby starting areas. So... Good job from software. Good job. As the game progressed, I saw, you know, the big castle in the distance and said, yeah, I'm gonna go there. That seems like it'll be a fun time. And spoiler alert, it was. And I must say, this game looks so visually appealing and looks so great. But I did notice some frame drops in some areas. Not necessarily frame drops, but just at uh, places where the frame rate, you know, was lower than the typical 60 frames per second. Now, this could just be because I was streaming and recording the game in, like, two different formats, which was kind of crazy. But it is something to look out for. I was also on max settings as well so you know if you're gonna play the game maybe don't stream it at max settings and record in like two times hd resolution or something crazy like that so you might see some stutters in the recording but overall i didn't really have any bad experiences with that it never really damaged the play experience at all i was having a good time i was playing bloody elden ring well of course i'm having a good time the first kind of main boss i ran into was in this little plaza area and he was like talking about like grace of gold something i don't know what he was on about but it was a pretty interesting fight. He had some pretty cool spells and like had a fire like impaling spear or something like that. I beat him eventually. I think it took me like one or two tries, but then I didn't get the weapon which just made me so sad because it looked really cool and I had like this whole like fire and lightning kind of deal going on. But you know, I rest my case, I rest my case. The way I play Elden Ring, I use a lot of spells and then use a sword kind of when I'm not at a distance. It's it's really cool just because there's so many cool effects and spells in this game. It feels like, it feels like a waste not to use them sometimes, you know? Skipping forward through this dungeon, we run into the Divine Beast Dancing Lion and this guy rules. So I'm fighting with my ditto and there was another summon. I don't know the lore reasons of it, but they're there. They're great. This guy has so many different attacks, and they all look so cool. This goes for all the boss fights in the DLC so far that I've played, but you never feel like it's the game's fault for any of the deaths you have. It's always something you mess up on and have to suffer the consequences of, and I really like that. It's just really good design. And let me talk more about this lion guy, because oh, 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 oh my god. So this lion guy, I don't know if he's like a puppet or something, I don't know. It's, it's a cool, it's a cool fight. It's a cool premise, cool design. The music also was surprisingly good. Like, it was a standout from the tracks I've heard. It's probably because it's not just basic orchestral music, and it's actually having like a bit more different instrumentation in there. It's still like the classic Dark Souls boss fight that you all know and love but there's a little bit of extra flair and a bit, a bit of extra, you know, pizzazz to the track. And I really was a fan of that. Overall, the boss was, oh, it was so good. It was so crazy. And uh, that was the first one. Once you beat that first main boss, you are brought up to this big tower and there is a door that is barricaded by shadows and you are not allowed to pass through. 100%, that is going to be where the final boss is, probably. I wouldn't be surprised. But the game then tells you to head eastward and we find ourselves in another castle area, which is cool and is where I experienced most of the frame droppage, but it wasn't for the parts that really mattered. It was just me running through things like a coward. I continue running through this dungeon, which has a lot of cool magic guys. Some guys just snipe you and then disappear and teleport somewhere else, reappear, shoot once, disappear again. Crazy. I don't know who thought of that one. You're bonkers. <laughs> then we get to the next Remembrance boss, Rolana Twin Moon Knight. And oh my god, I don't know if I like this more than the first Remembrance boss, the Divine Beast guy, but holy moly is this fight cool. In fact, I said I was going to do this all on stream, but I think I might just play more. It's such a good game. It's, it's so good. There's a really cool attack right near the end that the enemy probably only does once, where you get two moons up in the sky, they slam one down, they slam the second one down, and then they slam themselves down, and basically the attack radius covers the entire arena, which is so cool to look at, especially if you get caught in the very first one, and you're basically dead at that point. Once you learn how to dodge that and get the timing just right, oh, it's so, it's so good, it's so good. Now, I was playing on New Game Plus, I think, 4 or maybe 5, so my opinions might be a bit skewed on the difficulty of some things, but 
I'm just saying that this was a very, very satisfying boss to beat, especially when they had a bunch of different moves. They had ranged attacks, if you're trying to get ranged moves off. They had really good close quarters combat. They basically had all my moves. There was one where they did the, the fire pillars, and I had that. And I was like, what the heck? That's literally my move. But the best part about it is that when you beat the boss, which is basically using an upgraded version of the Sword and Night and Flame, you get to get that upgraded version of the Sword and Night and Flame if you cash in the remembrance for it. And then the two hours kind of ended there. Uh, I think I died 20 times throughout those, so not not too bad, but definitely definitely more difficult than, let's say, some of the other bosses in the base game. I do think it is a step up, but yet again, I'm on new game plus four or five. I forget which one. Take it with a grain of salt. So if you are wondering whether or not to get this DLC, uh, yeah, 